Hello, this is Professional Nerf back here again, and I'm here to give you a quick rundown on how this was made. I'd give a more detailed write-up, but I don't have the tools or the parts uh, with me at the time, and I probably won't have access to them for a while, and, but I will consider making a second batch of these. Okay, so there's two main components. There's like the handle, and then there's the blade and shaft. This is a, a list of the parts, I'll also put that in the description. But, okay, the handle is made up of... Let's, let's start on the outside. These two rings here are... It's, each one of these is half of a three-quarter inch PVC coupler. So what I did is just got a couple of them, cut them in half to make my um, handles. Now, the tube, that's, that's the physical handle grip, is a bit more tricky. That is made out of a six inch length of half a uh, one inch thin wall PVC. The only problem is, you might have noticed I said a one inch thin wall PVC, these are three quarter inch couplers. So what you do with the one inch thin wall PVC is you essentially make your own homemade or custom made three quarter inch thin wall. And how you do that is, let's say this isn't a three quarter inch coupler, it's actually an inch coupler well, let's say this is your three-quarter inch coupler. Now you just simply take a piece of paper, wrap it up, and you can set it in the coupler and then unwrap it inside the coupler so it sits in there nice and tight. Turn it down on its side, and then you mark it right at the seam. So now you can uh, cut it there. In this case, I'll just fold it so don't have a scissor sandy. But this is the circumference that you want to make your one inch PVC be instead of the circumference that it currently is. So then you take this, your measured piece of paper, and you wrap it around your pipe. And again, this is one inch pipe, but it'll end up having a gap like this. So then you go in and you mark that gap. Then what you do is you remove that strip about, it's, it ends up being about a quarter inch wide. Remove that strip. So then you have a pipe that will look like from the end, it will have a cross section sort of like a C. Okay, but you don't want it to be a C. And yes, you can probably cram it in your three quarter inch coupler then, but what you want to do is you want to heat it so it will maintain its shape better. So what you do is you can heat it either using like, I, I personally used a small butane blowtorch, but you can also use a toaster oven or an oven. Just start out at a lower temperature, but also keep in mind that PVC will outgas, so you probably don't want to do that in anything that you're actually going to cook in. Okay, so now you have that, you have it, you've heated it up, you've closed the gap that you created, so it now will fit in these three quarter inch couplings. Then you can apply your PVC cement, glue these on. So now you got these two parts and you got the main two. Okay, now comes the spring stop or what, what the spring sits on. Because this is a pretty beefy spring. Okay, the interior diameter of this is bigger than a half inch PVC coupler. So what I did, and we also, the other the other purpose of the stop in here is it's a guide for the back shaft of the blade. But the back shaft of the blade, it won't, won't slide through a CPVC coupler and you need something bigger than CPVC coupler to sit in here. So what I did was I used a half inch PVC coupler and in there I stuck a piece, st stuck and cemented, I used a half of one to start with because I was being cheap on parts. And then I used, stuck in a glued in a half inch PVC into that. And then I bored out the middle so that your half inch CPVC can slide through it freely. And then you want to bevel the edges too, like if you're making a hopper clip. Okay, so now you got that glued in there. But then you'll probably notice it's a bit big to fit in here. So you're going to need to sand it, file it, make it so it fits tightly in there. I personally used a belt sander. Okay, then you measure down how far it should be in there so that 
when this pushes down in, your spring will be fully compressed. So I think mine was something like two and a quarter inches to give full compression or near full compression on the K26. Okay, so then you put your uh, glue in there, you put your glue on your special like sanded down coupler piece and you push it in there and let it sit. Now that's that's the way you do it if you want it so that it's just a spring stop. But if you want to make it like mine so the spring doesn't fly out, what you do is I used say this is this is your uh, piece, your spring stop. What I did is I took a piece of fiberglass reinforced tape, wrapped it around one end of this spring, essentially, brought it to the other end, and then wrapped this end back around a piece of wire that's bent in a circle around the bottom here. So that when glued into the pipe now, it's hooked on the spring, and this end is hooked there, so there's no way the tape can pull out because there's that extra added bulk of the wire on the back end. Okay, so then if you want to do that, you can wrap that and then slide it in. Okay, now spring preparation. This is one third of a K26 or approximately four inches goes into each one of these. I've tried more, but it really doesn't improve it any. It actually sort of, sort of seems to hinder the flight. And what I do with these is when I cut it, you notice this, this one is the uh, rough cut, I would call it, because it's just cut it at a slope and it's still got the spiral going on to it. Now on the bottom you want it flat, like the two ends of the spring come flat, but if you're using the middle spring, it's not flat, so you want to flatten it. So what I did, used my butane torch, heated it up red hot, bent it, and then let it cool down, and then reheated it again and quenched it in oil. Oil quenching will return some of the spring, um, the spring properties of the metal, so then it doesn't become brittle and break if you try and use it. So that's pretty much the shaft, or pretty much the handle. Now, if there's two parts left, I'll cover the catch shaft. This shaft. Okay, the shaft of the blade. Let's let's just look at this part for now. What we have here is half inch CPVC, five inches, and then we have a similar system where we put the half inch CPVC into a piece of half inch PVC and then into a half inch coupler. The coupler has to be sanded down quite a lot for it to fit inside this uh, your custom made three quarter inch thin wall pipe. Okay, so you get this made, sand that down, bevel the bottom edge so it'll slide down into there easier. Okay, so now we, we're going to make the blade and then we're going to put the blade in and lock it in. Okay, so the blade. The blade is made out of a half of a one inch or half of a one half inch wide zip tie. They're about this long, I think it's about 16 inches. Pretty stiff material. I cut and bevel the front and then it goes, you want to leave an inch off or inch additional on the back so it sits in into here. But then you basically just make your outline of your blade larger, a layer of contact cement, layer of contact cement on your zip tie, stick, them to, stick those two together, then layer of contact cement on top of the zip tie and the other half of the blade, and then layer of contact cement on the other half of craft foam here. Sandwich it together, hold it for a while, and then that part's good. Okay, now we have essentially our blade with a little piece of zip tie sticking out the back. So then what you do is I slotted a one half inch dowel. That's one inch long because we have half an inch or an inch of zip tie sticking out the back. I put a bit of a bevel on the back end, sandwiched it together, and then I stuck just butted up against the vise, not even clamping onto it, and pushed it into our half inch CPVC. Now that's really tight, but then too when I put in this the spring catch on this side that'll really lock it in. This is a one quarter inch spring pin and I drill a quarter inch hole, make sure it's centered down until I hit the plastic so it's through the wood and then 
pound it in, cut it off with a cutoff wheel, grind it and sand it so it follows the contours of the pipe. Now that spring steel and that won't wear out. I mean, it'll, it'll hold up to a lot of use. Okay, so now we have our blade in there. It's been locked in place by the spring pin. Now we can make the catch mechanism. So you want to make sure that your spring pin lines up with a hole in this. Um, size of the pin, I don't remember what I used. I think I used a four penny nail. Not positive. But um, the catch mechanism is basically a homemade version of the clothes pin essentially. So I'll let's try and make this big enough so you can see it. But this marker works. Okay, this marker is not working, even though it works fine for that. Let's try it again. Okay, but basically, what it is, it's uh, let's go with this one. It's a stair system with the pin. So basically, when you push back on here, it pivots about the back corner and pulls a nail that's welded into this stair system out which pulls it out of the inner thing, pulling it out of this. So it's pretty simple. I mean, welding it really makes it work better. Yes, you can use a clothespin, but then you have a huge clothespin sticking way out here. I thought about doing it on the my ones because it was it's a simpler practice, but this turns out looking a lot more professional, especially if you want to be a professional nerfer. Um, other than that, um, this is a large size heat shrink. Don't ask me where you can get it. I have no clue. Just happen to have some. Has a nice uh, rubbery grip, and it looks very nice. Other than that, that is how it's made. Oh, and this one just has a bit of the epoxy putty on it to give it a nice slope here. Other than that, that's pretty much how it's made. It's a fairly complex process for a relatively simple weapon, but it works really well, and it took a bit to R&D this. Um, also, I also have one more of these guys left. I know a couple of people are contacting me about them. Um, I forgot who you all were, but I have one left. Um, you guys can make an offer if you want. I'll keep uh, checking my emails for that. Other than that, thank you. This has been Professional Nerd, and I'll have some more videos coming your way soon.